Today's video, we're going to talk about the search lost rank, is what it's called, which you can obviously see in your charts. In your Google Ads account, which basically tells you, if you don't already know what this is, the percentage of times out of 100 that your ad was or was going to show for a certain keyword that you're bidding on or could show that it does actually show. So if you're bidding on a keyword and there's 100 searches per day on that keyword in your market and you show up 65 times out of 100, well then your lost rank itself will be at uh, the inverse of that 40 XYZ percent, if you will. So it tells you how many times that you didn't show up even though you wanted to be basically show up, if you will. And so um, versus how many times you did show up, which is search impression share, it's different. Now this metric right here is basically not that useful for most people in most situations. The reason for it is, is because AI has taken over Google Ads, which a lot of people are still behind in understanding that. I'm gonna explain the nuances behind that. There is some definite uses to using the search loss rank, but it's primarily due to you know, just basically using it as a secondary indicator as to if you are dropping in performance, you find out this week, you know, you're just not getting the calls or not getting the sales, you can go and you look at this, but it doesn't necessarily give you anything that you can immediately do that'll probably fix your problem. It, what, it'll do, what it will do is tell you how to get your act in order or something you just did in the recent past really screwed with your account that probably will work its way out of it, which I'm gonna explain. So there's a lot of nuance to this. For the most part, people, it's not as simple as just, I need to be showing, you know, I should show at the top of Google for my keywords 100% of the time, and if I don't, there's something wrong, because that is not even what you want anymore to make the maximum amount of profit from Google Ads, because not every time you show up is profitable, is the short of that, but I'll explain more about that. So with that said, uh, back in the day on Google, uh, on Google Ads, back I used to do Google Ads back in 2005. Google Ads started in 2002. It was really easy for the average person. There wasn't, you know, Google Ad agencies like there are today. Um, and you, when you advertised on a keyword, red shoes, you basically showed up 100% of the time for red shoes, or you didn't. Things evolve though over time. Since about 2015, things have started being taken over by AI. So things aren't so simple anymore. What I mean by this is, is basically this. If you bid on that same keyword, red shoes, okay? You, if you're selling red shoes, you think you wanna show up all the time, but you necessarily don't to make the most profit. If you wanna make novelty, novelty sales and rack up a huge amount of gross revenue in your business for you know bragging rights, go ahead and try to show up at the top of Google. If you wanna make the most money in terms of actual profit though, you don't wanna show up at the top of Google every single time for your keywords. You wanna show up as much as you possibly can when it counts. Google doesn't just, it's not just a dumb system anymore where you either show up for a keyword or you don't and that's it. Google takes that keyword red shoes that you want to bid on and sub-segments it thousands of times, who knows, millions, I don't know for sure, but I just know it's a lot, okay? And what they're doing is they're looking at all the different people that search for red shoes on an ongoing basis, okay? They're monitoring every single person who uses the keyword or search red shoes on Google and have been for, you know, 10 plus years. And they database that information. And they look at all the people that search for red shoes and they find out which people look like they turn into a sale versus not. And then of the people that search for red shoes that turn into a sale versus don't turn into a sale, they look at all the traits they have. How old are they? What's their gender? What did they search before they search for red shoes? What, sites, what kind of sites do they visit? What do they buy? Which they have a lot of this data, like even what they buy, based upon Google Analytics, Google Chrome, uh, Google Wallet, there's all this information, plus they buy data from other people when they don't have data that they want, which is why they're, nobody can beat them at their game. And so, anyway, um, 
when you are trying to get customers and you're using enhanced CPC bidding, maximized conversion bidding, maximized conversion value bidding, what the algorithm's ultimately trying to do is find you the customers under that red shoes keyword that you're bidding on that'll get you a you know a, a sale or a conversion at the cost per sale or cost per conversion you want and there'll be instances within that you know set of people searching for red shoes on an ongoing basis that are profitable to go after and ones that are not furthermore if you don't have as much history and other people have been advertising longer than you on red shoes because they have smart bidding and because Google knows how to deliver them customers at the cost per customer they want or the ROI that they want They'll try to send a certain amount of known traffic they know will get them results, and guess what? You as a new guy gets the crappy remnant traffic because they think that you're going to be in and out anyway. So th anyway, long story short here, it's not just about showing up at the top or not. You want to show up at the top when it counts. And on a, the keyword level, and just using a keyword by itself to determine when and where you should show up is just the start of it. The algorithm knows when somebody's likely to buy based upon past people ha that have bought off that keyword before and get you to show up in those situations. So you could have a 50% search loss rank and still be making a lot of money. And if you were to go up to 75% or excuse me, 25% loss rank, uh, you would actually make less profit, okay? So now you understand why I wrote the title of the video as doesn't really matter anymore, okay? Where it does make sense is it's a, a barometer to tell, you know, what's going on in your account. If you're, like I said, if you're losing sales, you can go in there and say, okay, my search loss rank is, uh, you know, it's up. That's probably why I'm not having the sales this week. And it can put, Put you in a position to potentially not panic and not do anything and because you have information to make a better decision by the way the biggest problem that most new advertisers have why they never make any money is because they expect their ads to work right away they don't understand that conversion data that they rack up in their account is what gets them results because google has all this data as i just described but then on top of it each per each advertiser has its own customer that they appeal to with no customer data, Google doesn't know how to get you a customer at a good rate, and so they give up too soon, right? And then furthermore, on top of that, they, if they're not getting the results they want right away because they think it's a light switch, they think it's like Google 2010 where you either show up for a keyword or you don't, and it either works or, or it don't, like it's a damn yellow page listing that you pay for. And uh, ultimately, they... Um, make changes right away. They make a change, oh, that didn't work. Oh, it still doesn't work, I'll make another change. Oh, that doesn't work, I'll make another change. Each change uh, cumulatively adds more volatility, negative volatility in your results. Machine learning algorithms and AI systems like Google has hate change. When you throw any little change at Google, the algorithm's gonna get confused, and even if it's a change that's gonna be better for you long-term, you could expect negative results short-term. So what people will do is they'll make a change, the results go worse than it was before. Oh shit, it's even worse than it was before, I'll change it again. Then that causes them to go down a little further. And they're like, oh shit, it's really fucked up now. And then you see how this keeps going. Whereas, they should just make a damn change, wait a month or two months or three months for the dust to settle, and then move on to the next thing. And make in every change, more importantly, that they make, make an educated decision. Don't just be randomly changing shit. And if you don't know anything, or know enough about PPC to know what works, and you're just literally in there like a monkey chain, you know, switching levers and everything else, hire somebody who has some kind of experience because you're gonna end up getting nowhere anyway because of the things I just told you. Anyway, as it comes to search loss rank, there's some basic stuff I could tell you with this that you should kind of know. For a local business, by the way, it's a lot more cut and dry. If you're, if you're a tree removal service, for the most part, every person that searches for tree removal service, you want. It's not like there's a gross difference between one person that searches for tree removal service and another. So your search lost rank score should actually be close to zero, given, you know, basically, there's not a lot of situations where somebody searches for that, that it's not going to be profitable if you get my drift. On the other hand, national campaigns specifically, or especially, I should say, e-commerce, 
going back to that red shoe example, there's a lot of people searching for red shoes that aren't going to buy shit. They're not going to buy jack shit from anybody. They're just looky looks or looky loos, if you will. And so basically, you don't obviously want to show up for that portion of people searching for red shoes. So there's a lot more variability, in, in other words, in the people that are searching in your market that you have to then decipher which part of it is the part you want. So you never want to show up at, on Google 100% of the time. You, and you never not want to show up. You never uh, ultimately want to see your search loss rank being zero because it wouldn't make sense if you get my drift here. Other things to know, okay? I mentioned a little bit about this before, but any big change or significant change you make in your account, and a significant change could simply be, I changed all of our bids in our account by 10%. That's a big enough change to matter, a lot anyway. And um, the uh, your search lost rank will go higher in that situation automatically just because, again, even if it's the right change, because the algorithm hates change and you're, the whole AI is 100% predicated on previous data and you doing an analysis of previous data. When you make a change, the algorithm says, everything I used to know, I don't know anymore. So I'm gonna go back to the way that was before and just relearn everything again. And the bigger the change, the bigger the problem that you're gonna have. So your search loss rank is gonna go higher when you make a change. So if your search loss rank is going up, it's and you made a change recently, it's because of that, okay? Second, starting up a new campaign or ad account, more so if you also have a new ad account, it will always start higher um, than ultimately that, uh, that, than, than, than you want. So, um, basic, uh, the, uh, trying to think how I'm gonna go with this again. The brand new ad account is going to, you start out with no history with Google. Google's not going to take you seriously right away. So even though you want to show up 100% of the time on Google, you're not going to show up 100% of the time because the people that are there now are going to get the bread and butter traffic. Google, like I said, is going to give you the remnants. And so you can't expect to show up 100% of the time and force your way in because 90% of the people that come in, Google sees are in and out and they don't want to disrupt the guy that's been there for three years straight that they know how to get results for and is a loyal payer to, for you that's just coming in that they think is gonna be gone tomorrow anyway. So your search loss rank is gonna certainly be higher at the beginning if you have a new account. Same thing if you have a new campaign. If you have a new account with lots of established history and campaigns that have a low search, search loss rank, okay, then in that situation, your new campaign that you're setting up should start with a higher, uh, or sorry, a lower search uh, loss rank sooner in the process. So, but, but if you have a new account and a new campaign together, your search loss rank is gonna start out way high at the beginning. And you, you have to earn your way in. You could start to bid a lot more for a click and for a customer, but it's probably not gonna be profitable, okay? Third, poor performance will have your uh, search loss rank higher. Uh, for the same budget as your competitors as well, okay? So, the main reason why, so well, most people that come into Google Ads, they do it because they see their, you know, competitor, let's say, bigger than them doing it. So, like, oh, it must work for them, I'm going to do it. And then they get into it, and it doesn't have, it's not profitable for them right away. Well, by the way, if it was profitable right away, your other competitors in your market would also do it and there would be no opportunity there. Of course, anything that's that easy to do has no value, that's life. Especially true for something like Google Ads with everybody knows what Google Ads today is. You could ask 99 out of 100 business owners, they know what Google Ads is. So if you're gonna get in, you gotta do something different. So if you're, the two things that always Google is looking for is high click-through rates, high conversion rates on the clicks that you do get to your site, because that indicates to Google that users that see and click in your ad, on your ads have a good experience, which means they want to show your stuff, because if they show your stuff over the other people that are at the top of Google, given there's 10 people cycling in and out of the top four spots on Google for Google trying to figure out who has those best stats, those two, best, those two stats, the best, as I just mentioned, 
because if Google shows the people that have the best ads for their users, people will be more likely to click on ads in the future. So really everything about Google Ads just comes down to, if you want to make it simple, having the best click-through rates and the best conversion rates versus all the other people that are in Google Ads right now. If you do that, eventually Google will show you the most and then want to promote you the best, give you the best traffic, charge you the least for clicks. If your ads have a poor click-through rate and a poor conversion rate, you're going to pay a lot more per click than your competitor that you see at the top of Google now, right? And your search loss rank is going to be a lot higher because you don't have the same stats as the competitor. So if you're wondering why your rank, your search loss rank is very high, that is the biggest you know, thing of why it is. Assuming you didn't make a change recently, like I mentioned, that, that'll have a strong impact on your search loss rank itself, or you just haven't been around for Google to know that your ads have a good click-through rate and a good conversion rate yet. Fourth here, uh, you could force your search loss rank lower with higher bids or higher uh, limits, like you say that you know with smart bidding you'll pay more for a lead, or you'll accept a lower ROAS on your campaign, but it most likely won't be profitable. Google today is set up pretty much that you know, ultimately, if Google's not showing you a lot and you have to spend more to get to force it, if you will, it's not going to be profit profitable for you to do that. At the end of the day, the customers will cost too much to acquire won't be profitable enough. And that's the way Google has designed the system to begin with. They don't want, they let anybody come in, it's fair game for anybody in your market to come in and, and show who's there, who's boss, who's there now, who's boss, in terms of getting a better click-through rate and a better conversion rate. They give everybody a shot. Once they see you're not as good as the people that are there at the top of Google now, they now aren't gonna show you as much. Your search loss rank is gonna go higher and they're gonna charge you more per click. If you want your search loss rank to go down to zero, okay, by paying more for a customer ultimately, more for a click, more for a customer, chances are, usually in that situation, you're not gonna make money anymore. So the way to get the search loss rank is not just to bid more. The way, way to get the search loss rank it up, or sorry, uh, down so where it's at zero, or close to zero as possible, is to simply have a higher click-through rate and a higher conversion rate than your competition like I was explaining before, okay? And it's not gonna be instant. Even if you make the investment into having the best click-through rate, best conversion rates, Google's algorithm doesn't know it until they've had enough data to see that your ads and your new landing pages or whatnot or your new site has those better metrics. And it will take thousands of clicks before they fully real, you know, figure it out. And they gotta do it by keyword still again which is what Google's whole quality score system is. So if you actually want to get that down to zero, assuming that you've been advertising a while, there isn't any reason because you're new that your search loss rank uh, isn't low, and ultimately that you made a big change recently, which, uh, and have that the reason why it's high, then you go to work to beat your competitors on the way that Google wants you to beat them, which is high click-through rates and high conversion rates. You do that, you wait for Google system to realize it, you're, believe me, your search loss ranker will go down to very close to zero. By the way, if you get it between zero and 10%, that's basically where you want it. You'll never get it to zero anyway. And um, going back to what I said before, sometimes you won't even get there. You'll get it at 50% and that'll be the way that makes you the most money, depending if you're in like e-commerce versus local, like I said before, because ultimately showing more for those keywords, a higher percentage of the time for those keywords for people that are less likely to convert would be not profitable to you anymore. So just keep that in mind as you go through this that it's not necessarily supposed to be 5%, 10% like that in, in a lot of situations. Smart bidding makes the search loss rank pretty much irrelevant because you, once you get enough conversions, as I talk about in other videos, you should switch over to smart bidding. It's gonna be able to do better than you could do with manual bidding. Even myself, that all I do all day is ad strategy. I can't beat smart bidding. Uh, and with that, you put in the target cost per lead or cost per sale that you want. And with that, if the search loss ranks ends up being 50% to where Google can get you the most conversions at your cost per conversion you want, that's just what it is. Getting that down to zero would just mean ultimately that you would make less money, you would have less conversions. 
uh, or sorry, not less conversions, but you would have more conversions, but the conversions wouldn't be at the target cost per conversion you want. And the only way to get it to zero in that situation would be to tell Google you're paying, willing to pay more for a lead or get, or get a less ROAS or ROI to be able to get that. So it's a fruitless endeavor, basically, if you get my point there, okay? Um, where it is useful, like I said at the very beginning of this video, is the search loss rank score serves as an indicator as to why your performance of your campaign might be, go, might be down. The first thing I'm gonna do if my performance is down on my account, out of the blue, it's, you know, I had an account that was producing pretty solid, pretty consistently. I've made no recent changes, uh, significant changes recently. I'm gonna go ahead and look at that search loss rank and see, is there a change there? If there's a change, okay, maybe Google's algorithm has found there's a new top player that came in and is beating me at the game of getting a higher click-through rate and a higher conversion rate, and maybe I have to go ahead and reinvest in my process. Or there's just, you know, more competitors, which, you know, there, you know there's uh, multiple, well, we'll just say, at the end of the day, multiple people coming in that are willing to spend a lot and basically get customers at a loss, and that could be a situation that gets your score to go higher uh, as well, even though not always, but a lot of times they'll figure out it's not profitable at that point, and then it, it'll only be a short-term problem. They'll, you'll see it, there'll be new competitors, they'll be there for three months. They'll realize in order to get the, you know, shown, uh, you know, get their search loss rank, you know, close to zero, they'll have to get the customers at a loss, and then they'll be gone eventually when they realize what they're doing is dumb, basically. But anyway, if the search loss rank fluctuates for more than, you know, a week, let's say, then you know you probably got to revisit getting your ad click-through rates and your conversion rates better because that's the true way, like I was explaining before, in order to get that search loss rank as low as possible or as low as possible while not decreasing the amount of profits you can make in your market on your set keywords. So pretty much that's everything I could tell you about the search loss rank and how that all works and why it's important uh, in some occasions or can be useful and why in most other, most occasions in general, it, it's not very important anymore. So with that said, I'll, I'll pretty much wrap it up with that. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did like the video and you saw a lot of value out of it, I'd appreciate it if you would give it a like and consider subscribing to this channel as I have a ton of other content on this channel that'll help you make millions of dollars with your ads. With that said, if you like the channel if, and the uh, quality of advice I, I offer on this channel, you can find my blog at guaranteedppc.com slash blog, as well as you can follow my uh, column on entrepreneur.com. It has other advice directly from myself and my written work that you can follow there. With that said, if you are looking for the best PPC manager, you can reach out to me at my firm at guaranteedppc.com. I'd be happy to give you a free assessment on your campaigns to tell you how much more sales results I can bring your campaign short term uh, before cha we charge any fees to you. Uh, that's our signature service that we hear, have here at our firm. The only catch is if we don't work with just any kind of client. You have to have a great product or service that will do well under our management to start with. But if you have something great that just needs the best marketing, I'd love to be able to hear from you and give you that kind of assessment. We can talk on the phone about your opportunity. Uh, beyond that, if you are not looking for an ad manager and you just want to shortcut your success, we've been selling ad templates that work for the markets that we have been in before. In that, if we've gotten really great results in the plumbing market and you're a plumber, you should use our templates to shortcut your way to success because we already have the campaigns and the you know ad templates and landing page templates and everything that get results in your market, really good results, in which we could tell you what results you would get with our templates. Literally, being able to copy and paste the templates we have into your ad accounts, use them and get those same results for yourself. We've got people starting side businesses up with their templates, they work so well. Like if you know they're doing towing now, they wanna you know, start doing e-commerce, selling printer toner, we have a template for that. <laughs> you could use that and you could outsource the work to somebody else. Uh, so it's kind of interesting what people are doing with those, but uh, nobody else is necessarily doing that. We are offering that as well. We sell those for a one-time cost. That one-time cost will be less than what it costs for you to put that campaign together in terms of lost money, doing trial and error and split testing and everything on your own, I promise you. So if you're interested in that, reach out to me. I'll let you know what uh, markets we've worked in. We've worked in over 100 markets before 
And then of course, what results we got in your market if we worked in your market as well and you're interested in our template uh, for that market. So with that said, I'll wrap it up with that. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you on my next video where we have another great strategy for you then. See you later.